Hi guys, welcome back to Lizzie's Pet Pal. Look who I have today. It's Milo. Say hi, Milo. Hey guys, it's me, Milo. I also, side note, have my other one here, my other little guy. Jordan. So anyways, I had an experience yesterday where I was able to talk to somebody and kind of just be able to share some tips on just some training and what things could be done. He was just really impressed with how Jordan and Toby, they were walking with me by my side. And he said, how do you do it? And of course, you know, Milo's little. He's going on four months now, so he's little. So I had him on the leash. But um, he was just really impressed. He's like, if I were to ever try to walk my dog without a leash, he said, it would never work. He would just dash. He'd try to get away from me. So as I'm talking to the gentleman, he expressed a concern to me that his one-year-old dog bolts out of his front door. And I can understand be the fear behind that because if any of our boys did that, I would be scared too. Trust me, I would be so scared that, you know, they get hit by a car or something happens to them that could have been avoidable. You know, because there's always people that are walking their other dogs and you just never know the interaction your own dog could have with another one. Not every dog is as friendly as people make it out to be. Some dogs like to just um, walk and have their own space. And there's some that are friendly. But the point is this. You don't want your dog to bolt out of your front door because you just don't know what's on the other side. And so as I'm speaking to him, I, I realized that there, there are things that can be done in that moment. Um... Oftentimes, when a dog is bolting out, it could be a few reasons, right? But I'm just going to give you one for now. So if your dog has high energy, because say, don't know how often people walk their dogs, but one way to just have your dog be in a state of calmness is to walk them regularly. Because if not, then they have, a set, they have all this pent-up energy inside. So as soon as you open up the front door, what are they going to do? Boop, they're going to bolt out. So that's one thing that can help. To just make sure to, to drain your dog's energy um, by taking them out for a, a, a walk, maybe like a 20-minute walk at least to begin with. Again, depending on age and depending on the breed, some require more or some require a little bit less of the walking. Or if you have toys that you play with them outside or there's some people that actually have agility courses in their backyard. However you work your dog out, that's one way you can get them to a place of just calmness. Okay, and then another thing that, that could also work is before you leave the house, as humans, we have a tendency to baby our dogs. And I say we in general because there's a lot of people that do this. Somehow we look at our dogs and we say, okay, we almost treat them like a human, which reality is it may not really be the wisest thing to do. And I'll explain because at the end of the day, they are dogs, right? They are our family members, but they are dogs. And they're um, creating a balance for them mentally, physically, um, and even just how you feed them. Everything has to be balanced. Discipline is important. So the more you balance a dog out, the happier they will be. And that's just a fact. There's no way to go around that. But as soon as you start spoiling a dog, you start spoiling him or her, giving them whatever they want. If there's no correction that, that is being done, you will create a disaster, a, a terrible one that will be harder to fix. Not saying it's impossible, but it starts with you. So as humans, because we have a tendency to baby our dogs, sometimes when people leave the house, they create an environment of excitement. And this is what I mean. If you ever leave your house and you do one of these things, I would try to just curve it. If you go to your dog and say, oh, oh my goodness, I love you so much. I miss you. I'll see you soon. You see, you hear the, 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 the pitch and the tone and the energy that I just created. All of that to a dog creates excitement. Since they don't understand the human language, even if you tell them, I miss you, I love you, I'll see you soon. They didn't understand the actual words that you said. But they did pick up on our energy. The energy I just gave out was excitement. Oh, hey, I love you. I miss you. I'm going to see you soon. And then the high-pitched tone, all of that just creates excitement. So then as soon as you shut the door, 
whether you you create you you create your dog or you leave them to free roam your your house as soon as you shut the door all you leave with them is excitement and all of that just pents up from them by the time you come home it's no wonder that the next thing they're going to want to do is bolt out the door because first of all they're excited that you're back home right they're excited to see you but beyond that if you create open the door too far and you created a in essence, an entryway for them to leave, then yeah, they are going to do that because they have to somehow release that energy. So instead of creating that type of excitement, what you want to do is just make sure you just leave with calmness. It's okay to say you're going to miss your dog. It's okay to, to pet them and say that everything's going to be all right. But make sure that you speak with just with a calm tone, calm, confident tone. And that will go a long way. And then by the time you come home, you definitely don't want to just like open the door all the way out and then, you know, <laughs> create a space where they can just leave because it is dangerous. Just gently open up the door and just come on in calmly. Everything has to be done just with calmness, calm and confident. You know, I'm not saying calm and then be all uncertain about what you're saying or doing. Just be calm and confident because when your dog sees that, they'll respect that. And the more you practice that calmness in your tone, they'll understand that, you know, what, everything's going to be okay. My, my human, my, my mom, my dad, you know, whatever, however your dogs reference you or how you think your dogs, you know, reference you, my mom, mom, my papa, whatever it is, um, they, they know that you're going to be okay, that you, they will see you soon and everything's going to be just fine. So that's one tool, one method that I expressed to him that could work. Um, and then of course the, um, the training collars. I mean, he was really impressed with how well my, my dogs walk with me, Jordan and Toby, which it takes time. I told him that my guys are a little bit older and it doesn't just happen right away. But the more you do it, the more you you set the tone for, for what your dog, you want your dog to do. So my dogs know how to leash walk properly. Um, but I told him that right now we are in transition of walking them without a leash. And it's not for everybody and it's not to just be done on open street. So I just wanted to make that very clear because it can be dangerous. If you have a dog that its attention is here and it's there, and then on top of that, if you the owner, for every time your dog does something that you feel is is, is out of line or, or that you don't want them to do, and then you start shouting, hey, no, oh, don't do that. All of that will just create even more problems. And so I went and explained that to him because my two dogs, Jordan and Toby, they're older. They're walking with a with a leash, um, a collar, which I'll show you what it is. It was like one of these kind of collars where they have around their necks. And um, I have a remote here where if they get fixated on something, all I do is press a button. And it just gently vibrates their, their collar. So then it snaps them out of whatever they're being fixated on. And I barely have to use it because at this point in their lives, they've understood the, the command of come you know, uh, come here or come, either one, it works. And so that's another thing too, though, as you're training your pup, the less words you use, um, the better. And of course, he, the, the gentleman asked me, do you ever use treats? Oh, definitely, definitely, because my, my dogs are treat motivated. And so in which are, a lot of dogs are too. So you can, you can use a treat, you know, you wave it in front of their nose. If you want them to walk by your side, you keep it close to to where your leg is and then you give it to them. And so with repetition, they'll understand what it is that you're asking them to do. So that's why I said earlier, they don't understand the human language of come over here. I need you to do this. And, you know, if you're talking and talking, they're not going to understand that. However, will key phrases work? Absolutely. That's why if you're teaching your dog to sit, you say sit. If you want your dog to fetch, you say fetch, right? But if you're using like excessive words and you got a high pitched voice and your volume's loud, that's not going to work. So I showed him that. I showed him with Milo because he was the one that was on the leash and he was standing next to me. He was sitting there. I mean, at first he was standing and then he sat down. So as soon as I said to him, oh, hey, Milo, and then I went and I pet him. Boy, Milo got really excited, was wagging his tail, was ready to go. So I said, so you see right here is a perfect example of how you use your tone really matters. If you're using it to correct, but you're high pitched like that, I said, no, they interpret that as you're rewarding them. So another thing I, I shared with him was that if ever I don't have treats with me, another form of reward is petting a dog. That is a form of reward. 
And so if I want them to do something and we're outside, I will say, good boy, you know, and my, my tone goes a little high or good boy, good job. Or I'll say their names because they all know their names by now. Good, Toby. Good job, Toby. Or good job, Jordan. Uh, so just short, short. Good boy, Milo. Short, short phrases. And they know that. And they look up at me and, you know, start wagging their tails and they, they keep obeying. So I told them that. If ever you don't have treats, another form is just to pet them. When you pet them, you're basically affirming that the action that they did was correct. So there's incorrect ways to to um, to use the reward of petting. If there's a if your dog went outside, bolted out the front door, and naturally as humans we're scared. We're scared that something could happen. So. Our minds tell us if this was one of our children that did that, we just want to pick up our child and just hold him close and just say, oh, oh my goodness, something happened, could have happened to you. Oh, I feel so bad. And then you're just holding your child. So if you do the same thing to a dog, you pick them up, you hold them, and all of a sudden you start petting them because in your head you think you're reassuring them. No, you're sending the wrong message. You're basically telling him, you're affirming him that the action that he just did right now was correct. And what is he going to do next time you open up that door? He's going to do the very same thing. And that's not what you want. So these are just different things to keep in mind. You can train a dog with a leash. Um, if you have one, you just keep them close by you. You have treats. You give them a treat as needed. And the, and the more you do it, consistency is key. Repetition is key. Dogs are all about consistency. So if you, the owner, are consistent, you keep this going on for a long time, eventually you're not going to even need the treats. And that's what I told the gentleman. You're not always going to need it. But at first, does it work? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every dog loves a good treat, right? And that's fine. But as time goes on, you 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 will you can draw back from that and it'll be just fine. Your one word command or or a click of a finger or some people use clickers, right? Um, all of that could help. But at the end of the day, you just got to do what works for you. So whether you're using a collar, whether you're using a leash, and actually whether you're using a clicker, it really doesn't matter. So this is what I mean by a clicker. I have a clicker here where there's just a button. And so if you click it, just that noise itself can snap your dog's uh, brain from whatever they're being fixated on. So you could use a clicker to either correct a behavior or to affirm a, a, a positive behavior. It's whichever way you want to use it, but just make sure you choose one method or the other. If you're going to constantly use this for good because they did something good, good boy, and then you give them a treat, but then they do something that you don't agree with, bad boy, then, I mean, it sends a mixed signal. So you got to just decide which way you want to use it. But wh whichever way you decide, it will be the one that works best for your dog. So there is no right or wrong way to use different training tools. It's just whatever you see the need for your dog in that moment. So for example, the gentleman did not think of using a clicker or he's actually, he did say he used it, but he said, oh, I just don't see how it works. But he, he didn't even think about using a, a collar, a vibrator collar. So he's like, well, maybe that could work. And so I just told him, yeah, give it a try. What is there to lose? Of course, some people have mixed um, feelings about it because they say, well, maybe it's just too, it's too much for them. But to be honest, there's different settings on the vibrator. And like I said, I barely had to even use it on Jordan or Toby because they, they've already been at the position where they understand what is expected of them. So as Milo's growing up, at times we will use the collar and we have it on like the lowest setting, enough just to get him to realize like, hey, we're, we're, we're trying to grab your attention. This is what we need from you, right? So yeah, just keep things short, sweet to the point. And eventually, as time goes on, you're going to see the transformation in your dog. Then before you know it, you'll also get a lot of compliments of, wow, look how well behaved your dog is. Because right now, um, needless to say, we do get compliments, my husband and I, on how well our, our, our dogs behave. And even Milo at the tender age of, of almost four months, people are just like, wow, like he's really friendly a dog and, you know, he, he already listens. And so... We're still training him to, to, to go potty, and um, he is already doing a lot of it outside, but everything takes time. And so if accidents happen, the best thing you could do is just keep calm. Don't get upset. They don't understand that. And um, 
in the long run, it would all work out for you. So just be patient, keep pressing forward. And it's exactly the same thing I told a gentleman. He was really excited. He felt hopeful. He was appreciative of our conversation. And so was I. And I told him, if you ever have any other questions, feel free to let me know. And he's like, oh man, we'll do. I just hope you don't get uh, tired of my questions. I told him never, never. I said, I love dogs. I don't claim to know everything, but if I don't know something, I will find the answer. So that's just, that's just what I love to do. So as I journey on in this, this YouTube channel with you, you're going to see different videos of all sorts of things related to dogs. And it's with pleasure that I present all of these things to you. So as always, remember to like, share, and subscribe.